Hello, my name is Tammy, and welcome to my podcast. I just wanted to give you a little bit of background before we get started. I am a Colorado native. I've always been interested in true crime ever since I was a kid reading True Detective magazines, which some of you may not remember. I've always seen that the biggest victims in crime always appear to be women. It isn't saying that women are the only victim, but they seem to be the largest among victims. And I have loved the podcast I've listened to about true crime and wanted to participate in this podcast as well. I did want to add a little bit of change to my podcast, and here's what it is. I'll have scenarios documented, and there'll be clues provided, and it will be up to you based on these clues to decide who the perpetrator is. This is based on serial killer history, and any true crime aficionado who loves to to solve crimes may enjoy participating in this. But ultimately, the true reason would be to sharpen your deduction skills, because perpetrators are always sharpening their deduction skills to take on new victims. With that in mind, let's get started. One thing I'd like to add before we do get started is this is going to always be an adult content podcast. And for some adults, this may not be a good podcast for them to listen to either. If this is not the subject matter of your choice, please do not hesitate to skip this video or come back at a later time. Thank you, and let's get into it now. The game is afoot. Good evening, my Truth Clues fans, all my guys and dolls, cats and kittens. I hope that you viewed the prior Tinder videos to know what I'm talking about here. I'm just finishing it up. This is what we call in the old days the epilogue or the end. And just to kind of give a positive note to what you can do to stay out there and stay safe if you like to get on Tinder and do some crazy boot knocking. Um, I did hear a lot of questions on how to talk to a girl, so I'll briefly touch on that topic. And maybe you won't even have to go to Tinder. Maybe you'll find a real true live girl. And um, I'm not saying that guys are not out there. I just know that social media is a popular form of meeting people. And I'm just offering you an alternative. Meeting one in person. So, do you approach a girl if she's sitting, standing, and looks relaxed? People who are in a positive mood and show open body language tend to be more willing to have conversations. Um, If they're busy doing something, rocking out to the ear pods, maybe doing homework or reading a book, um, it always pissed me off when guys would come up and interrupt you during that time. And maybe some people like it, but it's not good approachment behavior, if you're asking. Do you approach if you're that... Do approach if you've noticed her sending several glances and or smiles your way. If this happens, she's likely to be interested in you and wants to start a conversation with you. Those are pretty good signs. You know, a little eye play back and forth, maybe a little shy smile. Kind of looking away, but then looking back over at you to see if you're looking at her type of thing. Um, is definitely a good sign that you'd be welcome on approach. Again, don't approach a girl if she looks upset. Chances are she's having a bad day and she's not going to respond positively to you and call it getting hit on by a stranger. And at that point, you've become a creeper and forget getting anywhere with that person. Um, the worst thing to do is get put into the creeper friend land. Don't approach a girl if she looks Um, like she's deeply preoccupied in something, interrupting her won't make a good impression because you're putting your own feelings and needs above hers, quite honestly. Look for go signals. Be honest and sincere in your approach. That's mostly what I got responses on when I talked to my friends on Facebook and I asked them what they thought. I'll give you some of their opinions here at the end. Create an instant contact with your eyes. Eyes are what they call the window to the soul. 
and creepy men and liars don't make contact a lot of eye contact um, narcissists do at the beginning but then when they really are lying they're gonna fidget and move away from you most chances are more than likely been doing a little research on body language there but it's definitely a good thing to pay attention to the eyes it shows confidence approach a lady or a girl from the side don't head-on approach like you're a bull in the fucking china shop because that makes you feel like you're getting attacked by a bull in a china shop as well approach from the side at a side angle they can see you coming and prepare for your presence rather than being startled by it a couple of things to have in mind when you're approaching. Prove you're worth talking to. Is this someone I can trust? Are they worth my time? Those are two things that you'll think of immediately as a girl. Show that you're trustworthy. Ask him advice. But ask for advice in a playful way. Again, nobody appreciates a goddamn creeper. Ask them for a favor. Hey, can, I hold, can you hold my jacket for a second while I grab these drinks? Make a stand on an opinion, but don't overdo it. Again, nobody's looking for a creeper or an asshole. Warning for advanced students only. This isn't about being a rude jerk. That said, you're attractive when you're passionate about something or have an opinion. Avoid the argument topics of religion and politics, especially politics these days. Safe topics would include movies, music, food, and anything else that you're comfortable discussing with your grandma. Yes, if it's good for your grandma, it's good on a first date. Texas barbecue is the best, and no one can convince me. Try to, although. Say it with a smile so people don't take you too seriously and think you're being that rude asshole creeper person. Okay. Some things to be cautious of. It seems like it would be common sense, but I'm going to go ahead and cover it here anyway. Because anytime you hear something in your gut and you have it confirmed by the outside, it's most definitely the universe telling you this shit is for real. If they barely fill out their profile, you can use their profile as a tool to determine if you have anything in common or if something beyond their looks intrigues you. Again, if it's not filled out, why? Were they too much in a hurry? They can't bother to tell you about them, who they are, so you can see if you have any interest in them. Or is their interest in purely sex? Are they using raunchy pickup lines? If they are, look up Tinder Nightmares. Humor can be a wonderful icebreaker. But also remember, you are worth more than a lame pickup line. Like, hey, lady, are your legs tired? You'd be like, what? And they're like, yeah, you've been running around my mind all day. Well, it's nice, but it's a little creepy-ish, too. Get the hell out of here. Um, someone who truly wants to get to know you will take the time to do so. By asking questions about you, engaging in conversation, there should be a kind of back and forth. The eyes are engaged. The body language good. Are they controlling if someone is coming on really strong right away, back the fuck up. Or if they pressure you to meet in person before they're ready and you're talking online, don't do it till you're ready to do it. Maybe video chat, make sure there's not some catfishing going on there, whatever you got to do. Feel free to pump up the brakes and set boundaries. And if you feel like you have to pump up the brakes and set boundaries, then I would really sincerely consider that this person may not be the right person at all. Unless you're looking for rough sex and maybe death in the end. If they don't respond to these boundaries, they certainly aren't respecting you. Hey, you should feel free to be you. If you feel like someone's already trying to change things about you to suit their needs, that's not okay. Sometimes this controlling bullshit don't come up at first. You know what I mean? Um, in the narcissistic relationships I've been involved in, they come off and they're like very uh, complimentary to you. Maybe it's considered a love bombing. It goes over a certain amount of time. It's not a first time thing in the relationship. They appreciate you. They look at you. They appreciate your education, your job, and all this other bullshit. You're pretty. You're hot. And then as time goes by, 
Um, you're a piece of crap. They want to usurp your powers and take them on for themselves. So pretty much you're just like an appendage in the room, like an arm or a hand. Not really a person anymore. Um, they don't acknowledge you. They don't want other people to acknowledge you. And I've been through that firsthand. Um, but for me, those relationships didn't bear themselves initially, and it was a year or two down the road. That is why I deeply encourage a long relationship, engagement-wise or not. Don't fucking put your shit out there to be taken advantage of. If they're mysterious, mystery can be fun, but it can also be a sign that someone is hiding shit from you. Another life, wife, kids, boyfriend, sexual um, diseases. You have no fucking idea what these people are up to when they start this bullshit with you. Um, if that's what's going on, trust your instincts. Trust that little voice inside of you because that's your survival. Listen to it. Act on it. If they're demanding, first impressions can be revealing. You can really get to know a lot about somebody on the first date. And it's actually possible to detect some red flags, unhealthy behaviors, even in the very beginning. One example is if they're making demands early on, maybe to meet, hang out at their place rather than go out somewhere together. Another example could be if they expect you to change your schedule to accommodate yours or to accommodate their schedule. That right there is a real deal breaker. That used to happen to me a lot. Oh, if you cared for me or, you know, kind of insinuating that you should be placing them above all and changing your plans to meet their needs. But if it doesn't go both ways, then hey, fuck you, hit the road. Or cancel existing plans to meet them. If something comes up, something comes up. What are you going to do? These types of behavior can be controlling behaviors. This person can make you feel special, respected, and valued, even if there's a hint of controlling, possessive, disrespectful, or otherwise unhealthy behaviors. That's because they have that makeup shit going on where you go through that little fucking honeymoon thing, and then you want to write it off, especially us as women, um, or some men too, want to think the best in people and hope that they always have to change. No! No, no, no. Men are not a fix-it project. Relationships are not houses that need to be fixed up and made the way they are supposed to be. Get that going out the door where it only gets better going forward. Signal for help. Most importantly, your safety is number one priority. Always meet in a public place for first couple of dates. And really keep in contact with your friends for more than the first couple of dates. If someone's pressuring you to meet up somewhere in a private or first date area, this could leave you feeling trapped, especially if you're not enjoying the date or there's a possibility of you getting raped. Pick a place that you're familiar with and you've been there before or a place where you can easily head home if things are going south. If you're going somewhere that serves alcoholic beverages, hopefully you'll wait, you know, till the third or fourth date, especially with the research I've done. You don't want to be putting yourself out there even to get mickeyed or roofied or whatever the hell they want to call it. Make sure you get there early. Talk to the bartender. Find out what the secret code is so that if you have to use it, you can signal them privately and get yourself to a safe place because that is first and foremost what you need to do. After doing a little research on this person and making sure there's nothing horrible out there on the internet or social media about them. Another way to stay safe is to tell a friend or multiple friends and have them call you when you're going out. I know it sounds repetitive, but have them do it at least the first three dates. Because a lot of things have happened after the few dates to these people that have been on Tinder and other dating sites as well. And remember, remember, remember... If you are ever abused, assaulted while on a date, it is not your damn fault. Get help. Get that person stopped. Because the chances are, if they're doing it to you, they're doing it to other per people out there as well. And this is where we need to stand strong. Be strong, true clue survivor. Pay attention to those clues when you're out there dating and act on them. Stay safe. Be good. Or be bad. Whichever it is you want to do, just do it safely.
So I did want to share with you some of the comments that I had received when I asked what is a professional and respectful way to ask a person out in today's era of judgmental society or whatever you want to call it. Marco said uh, approaching them in a polite manner and sincerely is good. Um, he said to the effect... And I think that attitude will definitely take him really far. Nancy, our social worker who has been on before, who I deeply love, uh, she said she would start off with a positive comment, something like, I like those shoes, I have been looking for something like that, or I really like your hair, it's so pretty. Um, those comments open it up for a conversation to happen. And that's true. Uh, conversation starters are always appreciated. Robert... How are you today? Hope it's great. You have a great smile. Another conversation opener. Hopefully they'll respond in the same manner. And Chelsea had her opinion on that as well. And she had uh, to say a simple, honest compliment about something a girl would uh, compliment her on. Like, your hair is beautiful or that color of dress looks amazing on you. I hope you have a good night. Maybe we'll run into each other on the dance floor. Be safe. That is really great. The be safe thing and truly meaning it would be wonderful. Jackie, another great friend of mine. Anything positive a man says is questionable. Eyebrow raised like the rock. And that's coming from the heart there. Read his gestures, body position, and eye movement. Yeah, a lot. Trained eyes, no. But if you have a feeling in the pit of your stomach, don't lead that astray. Let that small voice in your head guide you and keep you safe. Deborah, who has sons and is a little upset over the Me Too movement because she's always brought her sons up to be respectful and to learn how to approach a woman. If you don't know them, it's best to just talk with to like to a new acquaintance that somebody you're trying to get to know, and not to be expected to be thanked for every conversational exchange that happens between the two of you. How are you? How are you liking this music? Is an example of non-threatening opening line. And I totally understand if you have brought up your kids with um, honest manners and sincere behavior, this should not be a problem. And I'm not talking about the Me Too movement. I'm talking about narcissists, and I know they're probably in the Me Too movement too. But I wanted to share those comments with you to let you know. So you all have a good night.